You know, I'm not quite sure if you could tell by the title, but we are drafting yet again. I don't I did not press that, I don't think. I must have, but it didn't feel like I pressed anything. Actually, maybe that was a sign, because I do have to go back. We're randomizing the team from play now, and the first Metropolitan team I land on will be the team we use. We get two Metropolitan teams right here, but these do not count. Okay, so I'm on the left side here. Let's go ahead and randomize. First team is going to be Tampa Bay. No, that is not going to do it. Can I randomize again? I can. That is also not Metropolitan. Come on, give me... There we go. A Metropolitan team. Again, I know there's been a lot of moves going on in this offseason. I've been saying it pretty much every video, but it does matter, especially in this one. I might have to look up some players because they may have moved. Obviously, we want to turn off owner mode and salary cap will leave it on player morale and we don't want Jabroni editing our lines. Injuries will be off and so will auto save. So if it crashes, we're screwed, but I don't want it bloating up my save slots because it just gets annoying. And I just realized I didn't turn fantasy draft on. There's always something. Every time. Not every time. Majority of the time. All right, fantasy draft is on. Let's see what I forget this time. We get pick 10. I forgot that that's where it's going to go next. We do not get pick 10. We get pick 30. Multiply it by three and you're right there. I mean, come on. The guy scores goals. You know what though? In a recent video that I made, this man's absolutely lit the lamp. So I'm going to take Sebastian. 88 overall medium elite. He is a worthy first round selection. I just realized we're pick 30, which means we're going to get another pick very close to this. Ovi might still be there. There is a slim chance, but there is a chance. Come on. He is! Oh my word, that first line's going to be disgusting. I'm sort of fighting with myself right now whether I want to take another capital or if I want to take a penguin. And I think I'm going to go with Jari just because that salary is really good. He is 85 overall. He's only 26 as well, so that helps out a little bit. Let's go with Tristan. Jeff Petrie is a pen now, so I am debating on taking him as our first defenseman. He shoots right. He's got three abilities. Yeah, I think he's a solid first selection. Really not big on that contract, but I'm going to take Voracek anyway. Our first line is going to be so good. What better way to start off your second line? than with Tom Wilson. We do already have a right-handed defenseman, but maybe Ryan Ellis could be on pair two and then we'll get two left-handed D next. I'm not really sure. That contract isn't very tempting either, but I'll take him anyway. Dmitry Orlov will be our first left-handed defenseman. I gotta be honest, I don't know where all my affordable kings are, but these contracts are gonna add up quick. In fact, they already are. We have 30 million left. Ryan Dumoulin, left-handed, six foot four, guy's a unit. Make him 4.1, defensive defenseman. Yeah, he could be our second pairing with Ryan Ellis. I think I would be breaking the law if I didn't take Timothy Jimothy Oshi when he's on the screen. I know we already have a second right winger. Maybe one of them could play the left side. I have no idea, but I'm going to select him. 5.7 hertz. I'm going to do some fact checking after to see if I did in fact select players that are only a part of the Metropolitan, but for now, just, just, Bear with me, okay? Brown does play for the Capitals now, but we already have three right wingers. Oh, Dan, does he shoot left? No, he shoots right. Yan is a Pittsburgh Penguin. He's only making 2.7. Another right-handed defenseman. That is strange. I thought right-handed defensemen were harder to come by, but apparently not. Paola will be playing for the New Jersey Devils. And he's a centerman, so that works out quite well. 2.3? Yeah, 82 overall. Can't say no to that. The only thing I'm worried about is that I'm recording these videos probably pretty far in advance because I'm going to be going on a small trip. So if something changes by the time this video comes out, I apologize. But at least as of when I'm making this, I am doing the fact checking for that. I think it's really slowed down though. I took Connor Sheary, by the way. I don't know why I just decided not to mention that. I see DeSmith down there, but I almost refuse. We're going to go with Corpy Sala, 1.3 at 80 overall. So right now we still need a left wing and a centerman for our third line and one more defenseman than our entire fourth line. So we... Only have $11 million a cap. This could be tricky. Scott Mayfield, why do you have to shoot right? Why? You know what? I don't care. I'm picking him up anyway. Oh, apparently I'm not. Now I am. We're finished for defensemen, so I can now just sort by forwards. Marcus Johansson, Mojo, was drafted by the Capitals, left for a little bit there, but he came back. So I'm taking Mojo as our third line left winger. It may seem like I'm taking a lot of capitals, but I promise I'm not doing it on purpose. Nick Dowd will be our third line centerman, and then we just need that fourth line. I'm pretty positive I've taken at least one player from every team though, so we don't have to worry about a team being left out. Maybe not the most ideal fourth liner, but Jesper Fast is here. He's a sniper. Maybe he could play on the third line. I have no idea. We'll just see what the lines look like. I won't worry about it too much for now, but he's only 2 million. 81 overall sounds good to me. I'm currently debating between Lars Eller and Sean Corrali. Eller has 82 face-offs, 3.5 star defense. Corrali has 3.5 star defense, 84 face-offs. All right, we'll take scene. The final selection for your 
New Jersey Devils will be Brock McGinn at 2.7. So we are just within the cap. There's the draft overview. I see that we got Ryan Suzuki over there, which is kind of cool. Moment of truth. Let's edit these lines. What do we have here? I knew we were going to have a plus five on the first line. I just knew it. Preferred lines. We get a plus two down here as well. So our first line consists of Alexander Overchicken. We have Sebastian and we have Voracek. This line is going to do bits. Then we got Timothy Jimothy playing with Howla and Mojo, Shiri, Dowd, Wilson. Wilson, Fast, Corrali, and McGinn. I did take a lot of capitals. I'm sorry, it wasn't on purpose, I swear. Defensively, we have Dmitry Orlov and Jeff Petrie, and then we have Ryan Ellis with Dumlin, Mayfield, and Ruda. They actually get a plus one, which is kind of nice. And in net, we've got Jari with Corpisalo as the backup. I think this team is destined for playoffs. We have to make the playoffs. Our second line isn't phenomenal. We do have an 82 and an 81 overall, but I feel like we're just very well-rounded. You heard it here first. Ovechkin gets 89 points. And he wins the Rocket Richard. So obviously I'm guessing that he's going to lead the team. And I'll say that we get 47 wins. And on that note, let's get the simulation started. Be sure to leave your predictions. Why do I feel like I always get a Western Canadian trip right before the trade deadline? I'm actually quite happy I didn't take Kemper now because that would have just been too extreme. I mean, I do feel like I have a bunch of pens on the team as well. We are hardly into the season and the pens have already fired William. Sorry about your luck, Bill. Sick. We came into the league hot and then just go on a massive losing streak. It's starting to look like we're gonna just have to hope for a weak division. Unless the lads turn up the Jets here. We are now beyond the break and we are about to hit 30 wins here. The New York Rangers will provide us with our 30th. I think 47 is still realistic. It could happen, but it's starting to look like we might not quite get there. Can we have the perfect Western Canadian trip? No, Edmonton beats us. So let's just set our thing to a buyer, doesn't matter. Enter the deadline to see what's going on here. Actually, someone pointed out that because I set our team as a buyer, that's what changes the trade block, and that's why I see players getting put here. But anyway, what a crazy deadline this is. We've got Patrice, we've got Kadri, Tarasenko, Rupe Hintz, Fleury, Drewen, Van Riemsyk. Well, anyway, I'm out of here. I don't need to make any trades. I'm keeping our team. The fantasy drafted team will do it itself. I have not seen a waiver claim in so long. What's his overall? He's 80 overall, and he shoots left. Now, I, I mean... No, it's okay. Apparently, there was no blockbuster trade to report, but the New Jersey Devils come out of the trade deadline hot here. We are 4-0 post-trade deadline. 5-0? 6-0? Holy crap, that was wild. I'm starting to doubt myself. Did I say 46 wins or 47? Either way, I think we're getting more than that, so I don't need to be too concerned. We are currently at 47. We have two games left, and we take... An L to Carolina, but we do beat Detroit. Washington will be our round one opponent. Ovi going up against his former squad. They had 42 wins on the year. We were quite a bit up on them, actually. But then the New York Islanders just killed everybody. That has to be President's Trophy, right? 119 points. Yeah, they had it. Montreal was the next closest with 109. What kind of team do they have? Let's see this. They got Kachuk, Dvorak, and Atkinson. Kirby Doc with Marcheso and Hoffman. Hagel. They do have Vazzy and Nett, so that explains a lot. They got... Gerard and Uyghur on defense, Martinez and Siegenthaler. I don't see anything too outstanding about this team other than that man right there. I know you cannot see where I'm pointing, but it is in fact Andre. Clearly they know something that I do not. We did have a stellar season though. We finished third in the entire league with 103 points. Let's scroll down to see what teams made it into the playoffs. And we got the 19th placed Washington Capitals. So we have the bottom team here. If we don't make it past round one, I'm going to be very distraught. I undershot Ovi. He got 95 points and we got a point a game from Seb as well. He put up 57, which likely is enough for the Rocket Richard. Voracek put up 73. He did quite well. Howla put up 50. Oshi 49. Petrie with 48. Let's go, Jeff. Goalies didn't do that great. Well, Corby Solo actually did quite well, but Jari got a 903 save percentage and 282 GAA. He only had three shutouts on the year. Corby Solo had three shutouts on the year and he played 21 games. He played like a third of the games and got the same amount of shutouts. So that's wacky, but Vasilevsky led the league with 42 wins. Obviously he had a 914 and 256. I don't see, oh no, I do. There is 1.92 and it's right here, Jack Campbell. Spurgeon will be your defensive leader. He put up 76 points, OEL put up 72 and so did Fox. We got Miro with 71, Yossi and Carlson both picking up 62. Matthews led the league with 124 points. I have not seen a 120 in quite some time. And then we have Patty Kane with 117. So apparently if you wanna have the sickest line in the world, just put Matthews and Kane together. Their other line mate has to be up here somewhere, no? I'm assuming it was probably Jared McC 
can. He was almost point a game at 83 overall. McDusty had 98. Ovi had 95. So he was fourth in the league. And with 57 goals, it looks like he did in fact get the Rocket Richard. So at bare minimum, the Metropolitan Draft will have an individual trophy. We will be going home with some kind of hardware. In case anybody's wondering, and I know people are probably taking it seriously, yes, I know that that is not how it's pronounced. It is the Metropolitan. The Metropolitan. Time to sim past these first three games against the Washington Capitals who barely snuck in, and we will be up in the series 2-1 after those three. Will we be able to be up by three? No. So we have a best of three series here against Washington. How will game number five go? We take an L. We are going to get deleted in the first round, aren't we? That's just classic. First period. Okay. Second. Ah, oh, we're down by one heading into three. Come on, New Jersey. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Halfway through the third period. Still no score yet in this period. We are being outshot pretty drastically. Oh my word, Voracek, you legend. We get a goal and that might push overtime. If we make it there, we do. Come on, push a game seven. Don't lose to the Washington Capitals who barely snuck into the playoffs. Washington just had the longest power play. I have seen in my entire life and we managed to hold them off. We deserve this win now. I mean, we kind of don't because they do have 47 shots. So like, what are we doing? But also let's go. No. Oh my goodness. I read it wrong. How do we give up 50 shots? How do we let that happen? Well, there's your three stars of the game in typical NHL 22 fashion. We <laughs> finished third in the league. Was it third or fourth? It was third or fourth. And we get demolished in round one by a team that Hardly even qualified. Our fellow Metropolitan team, the New York Islanders, would go on to win the Stanley Cup. Point a game from Seb. Five points from Mojo and Ovechkin. Jari didn't play that bad. He had a 2-2-2 two, two, and two record. 9-0-9, 2-67. I mean, it could be better, but it also could have been worse. I'm assuming that that 50-shot game probably helped out his stats a bit. Vazzy killed it in the playoffs. Had a 9-28 save percentage, 2-19 GAA. Hart had a 9-24, so he carried his weight as well. Gerard led defenseman by quite a bit. He had 17 points. The next closest was done with 11 then we had EK65 and Spurgeon getting 10 apiece. And Philip Tomasino getting 25 points in 26 games. He was the playoff leader for points. Matt Hoffman, or sorry, that's a BMX guy. I had a game when I was younger called Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX or something like that. And every time I see Mike Hoffman, I just think his name's Matt. It's just M Hoffman. And I'm like, yeah, that's got to be Matt Hoffman, right? And I realized that he most certainly did not play hockey. The third and final player to reach 20 plus points in the playoffs is Marcheseau. He put up 23 and 24 games. At this point, we pretty much know all the awards except for maybe that one. San Jose made it to the Stanley Cup finals. Matthews gets the Art Ross and the Hart. Spurgeon gets the Norris. I'm interested actually. If Tomasino wins the Conn Smythe, that's going to be crazy, but I think it's going to be Vasilevsky. Matthews also gets the Lady Bang. Yarvis gets the Calder. The Conn Smythe goes to Hall. Hoffman, wow. All right. Gibson gets the Vesna. The William M. Jennings goes to Campbell. Bill Masterton will go into the hands of Pulock. If he showed, we'll get the Jack Adams. Kopitar gets the Selkie. Matthews with the Ted Lindsay. And your boy, Alexander Ovechkin, gets the Rocket Richard. We didn't go home completely empty-handed. Here is the playoff tree. A sweepless playoffs. Nice. Love to see that. That means there was some real competition going on. Yeah, we got bested for sure in round one. And then the Capitals got dusted by the Islanders. To be fair, we probably would have been deleted by the Islanders in round two anyway. So doesn't matter that much. It just would have been nice to make it past the first round. But anyways, we have three more videos a part of this series because obviously I have to do the other three divisions. So we'll get around to those. I appreciate the ideas in the comments down below. I appreciate you guys for watching and I hope you're enjoying them. On that note, I will be seeing you guys soon.